Welcome back to Coin Sense and Nonsense. Today, it's another box of halves. And we're going to have some kind of special thing today for one of my long-time viewers. So stay tuned for... Oh, they are circulated. I see my bicentennials there. Anybody special? Y'all? What's this corrosion of conformity here? Nothing. Ooh, it could just be more 2018s, the way things are going. So, we'll check these out. Um, and, like I say, today we're going to have something different. We won't do our getting to know you uh, thing. We're going to do something different. We're going to do a segment for Debbie from Albuquerque, New Mexico one of my longtime subscribers and viewers um, and we're going to talk about what we do with the coins that we pull out of here and um, that'll be uh, hopefully something educational for more than just Debbie. So more to go. Alright we got everybody sectioned out here. No significant enders that I could see. So we'll get started and We'll let you know if there's anything good. All right, we have breaking, we have breaking news straight in your hat. Oh, shoot, 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 shoot. We have breaking news. No, doot, doot. No, but I heard the noise when I flipped it, not when I poured it. And look, I got a 1969. Isn't that lovely? I like it. So we're on the board with silver in the second roll. Nice. All right, we're busting in again. This is the tenth roll, and I heard the clank, but there it is, nice and shiny. 1968 sticking out. Very, very nice. So, we like it. Very good condition. So this box so far is pretty good. I don't think I'll have a need to bust in again, but just one NIFC 2015D and then the two silvers, a 68 and a 69. Nice. Alright, after the second group of 10, not so much to report, just an O3D. So, that's it. The silver has dried up. All right, these guys must have their silencers on or something like that. I didn't even hear it, but there she blows, another 1968. So just when I thought the silver had dried up, I was in the second to last roll of the third batch of tin, and now we get another 68. Cool. All right, so that third batch, not too bad. I had a 2010P NIFC and a 1968D. So, very, very nice silver. So that's three for the box so far. All right, not much to show from the fourth batch of 10. Just a 03P NIFC. Alright, the fifth batch of ten, and all we got is another O3P. So, the finds for the box are as follows, two O3Ps, one O3D, a 2010P, and a 2015D, and then three silvers. I got two 68Ds and one 69D. These are 40 percenters, so not uh, going to be able to retire on these, but chipping away at it here. Yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get on with the uh, rest of the show here. We're going to do like a uh, next step. What are we doing with our coins that we pulled out of here? Uh, this is really for Debbie from Albuquerque, New Mexico, or Debbie ABQNM. So, let's check it out. Alright, so what do we do with our coins after we're done coin roll hunting? 
Well, if it's something we might need, like if we're collectors, we might need this here. This is a 2010P. So we have our books. And let me just say one thing about half dollars. I think the reason that I'm really into half dollars is because it reminds me when I was a kid, my dad um, drove a lot uh, between New York and New Jersey. And anyone who's driven in the East Coast knows you don't go anywhere without paying a toll. And so I can remember as a kid hearing the sound of these coins and stuff. So it kind of brings back uh, cool memories from, uh, I think, when my dad used to have a lot of these in his pocket change. And when I was collecting coins, I was mainly into, like, uh, nickels and pennies when I was a kid because, you know, we weren't, like, rich or anything. But my dad, because he had, you know, the half dollars for the tolls and stuff, he started a Kennedy book. So I eventually uh, got his book. So there you go, Dad. It's still here. So I don't have the 64D in this one, but the rest of it is filled up. And, but since then, of course, I had to uh, expand. So we got, oops, how many books do we have? Sheesh. So, starting in 64, we got uh, the full Monty here. And we got everybody all the way through. So, this is what I do with the coins, uh, is I fill books. So, the NIFCs uh, started in 2002, uh, in the consecutive years, that is. So, this book ends up with 2003 I believe and so I've got that all filled in so these are when the NIFC started and you can see it really dropped off 3 million but uh, kind of in the mid 2000s it was actually like less than 2 million uh, per year so we have the next oops no, not in the green book but in the gray book starting in 2000 so then we've got all the nifcs here starting in 2002 so do i need that 2010 p i know i need a lot of p coins and yes i do so this is well that's a 2015 where's that 2010 there we go 2010 p so voila uh, mm -hmm. These are the NIFCs, and I've got another book started, or actually I picked up another book uh, at the coin show to keep it going, because this one, I think, is going to crap out at 20... We actually, it already crapped out there. 2017 is the last. So... For all the fabulous 2018s I have, I need this book. And I will fill that with the duplicates. So I've been saving my stuff in tubes. So these are the NIFCs. Actually, NIFC and um, they're actually proof. I saved some of the proof coins. And what I'm going to do with them is probably give them away. But if you're a collector, you could uh, put these in a book. There's really, you know, if you had a... Um, Dansko album. There's usually a place for proof coins. These are in pretty beat up shape because they got circulated, but they are proofs. So I've saved, you know, those in a tube. And then I've got silver in a tube of the extras that I don't need for books and whatnot. So, um, so that's what I do with mine. Um, just like you do with any coin is you'd save it or you could sell it and so let me give you a word about selling after I clean up this mess all right so now you've got your coins of interest and you know a lot of people ask what's the coin worth well the coins only worth what someone's willing to pay for it so you can look up your coins a lot of people use the red book and that's kind of if you're, let's say you have an eBay store and you're going to set the price and someone's going to buy from you, you might be able to use those prices. 
But if you're the coin collector and you're trying to like sell to a dealer or something, you got to think about getting the blue book instead. The blue book is a little more realistic, uh, closer to the dealer price. Uh, but they really work off of something called the gray sheet. And um, so depending on what the market conditions are and things, uh, that will dictate uh, how much your coin's worth. And like I say, uh, how much it's worth is how much someone's willing to pay for it. So you may get lucky if you post that money, but it just depends on what it is. But common coins like these NIFCs are relatively common, even though there's you know less than uh, two million per year of some of these. They're really only worth about sixty-five cents, or probably you know you'd have a hard time even trying to get that from a dealer. So um, it's just more for your own collector interest at this point. I think on the NIF NIFCs, you could set them aside, and you never know what they might turn into. But for now not worth too much so the big hunt in uh, half dollars is for silver of course and um, there's not a lot of pre-1964 um, you're lucky to find any 64s and well, any silver at all for that matter so that's our little primer on what you do and what happens afterwards but uh, just be careful with your red book price that's kind of like pie in the sky um, retail full retail price so if you're the buyer of the coin you're probably going to pay this price but if you're trying to sell the coin better off going with the blue book or thinking you're going to get maybe even a little less than blue book so, there you go. Until next time, coin sense and nonsense. Thanks for watching. Bye, Mike.